Hello, and welcome back to the Urology Care Podcast, the official podcast of the Urology Care Foundation. Our guest is Dr. Carmen Tong, a pediatric urologist at the University of Alabama at Birmingham in Children's of Alabama. She is here to talk about prenatal hydronephrosis, which is a very common condition in unborn babies. Dr. Tong breaks down the basics of this condition so new and expecting parents can be more informed. Let's get started. Dr. Tong, welcome and thank you for joining us on today's podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Can you start by introducing yourself to our listeners? Uh, Yes. Uh, My name is Carmen Tong. I am a pediatric urologist uh, fellowship trained at Vanderbilt. I am currently practicing at the University of Alabama at Birmingham and Children's of Alabama. Um, I've been here for about two years. Uh, My main practice revolves around uh, pediatric urology, hypospadias, spina bifida, and complex urinary tract reconstruction. So today's topic is prenatal hydronephrosis, which seems like it could be a scary term for new parents, expecting parents. So can you start by explaining what exactly this condition is? Yes. Hydronephrosis is a really big word. So I usually like to start off just explaining what the term even means. Prenatal or fetal hydronephrosis is a term that's used to describe swelling of the kidney caused by a backup of urine in the unborn baby. Um, It can happen uh, in one kidney or in some cases, both kidneys, in which case it would be described as bilateral. Uh, The swelling uh, usually starts off in the area of the kidney known as the renal pelvis where urine is initially stored. Hydronephrosis is really one of the most common fetal abnormalities diagnosed during pregnancy. What I like to quote to my parents is that it happens around one out of every 100 to 200 unborn babies. Um, And so it's really quite common. Again, uh, it can happen in both males and females, but it's actually twice as often in boys. And it's in both kidneys about 20 to 40% of the time. A lot of things can cause hydronephrosis in the unborn baby. The most common cause is probably transient hydronephrosis, which can occur up to 80% of cases. What that means is it can resolve on its own. Other common causes of hydronephrosis are caused by congenital anomalies of the kidney and the urinary tract, which is collectively known as K-cut. This includes obstruction or blockage of urinary drainage, like UPJ obstruction, and non-obstructive causes like vesicle ureteral reflux. Typically in the prenatal period, knowing the cause is really not as important and can be deferred until after birth. Okay. Thank you. That was a great explanation. So how exactly does hydronephrosis get diagnosed? Are there certain signs and symptoms an expecting mother may recognize first, or when do they actually find out that this condition is present? Um, Yeah, that's a great question. So prenatal hydronephrosis is diagnosed by ultrasound usually around second trimester. During the ultrasound examination, the, uh, the appearance of the fetal kidney can vary with and without hydronephrosis. So it's important for parents to get serial ultrasounds and serial measurements at each exam to monitor whether it's true hydronephrosis or not. Um, there's a lot that goes into grading hydronephrosis in, in the fetus. Um, several systems have been devised, but Primarily, they, uh, they diagnose and grade the severity of the hydronephrosis based on a, a very number of, uh, of factors, like the diameter of the kidney, how swollen all of the little chambers of the kidney are, the thickness, the appearance of the kidney tissue, how the bladder looks, and how the ureters look. And the ureters are the tubes that drain the urine from the kidney to the bladder. Most mothers will not experience any signs and symptoms. This is completely incidentally discovered during routine prenatal ultrasounds. Once it's diagnosed though, the the OB might refer the mother to a specialized physician in maternal fetal medicine to closely monitor amniotic fluid levels and um, to perform the serial ultrasounds. And so how is this condition treated? Does 
treatment happen during pregnancy, right after birth or several years later, or are there sometimes where no treatment is needed at all? So most cases of hydronephrosis really require no treatment during uh, pregnancy, just close observation uh, with the ultrasounds and the amniotic fluid level. In fact, about 50% of the time, um, fetal hydronephrosis can resolve on its own before birth, um, even before third trimester. There are some cases that might require surgery after birth to repair the defect in the urinary tract. There's been um, a lot of studies looking at fetal surgery in cases of severe hydronephrosis, but there really is no good evidence um, that fetal interventions so before the baby is born. There's no good evidence looking at uh, improved kidney outcomes or kidney function outcomes, or even long-term patient survival. Really the goal of fetal intervention is to increase the amount of amniotic fluid, hoping to improve lung development and improve survival rate. There's still a lot of high risk involved uh, relating to early death of the fetus and even chronic kidney disease in these survivors, um, oftentimes requiring some sort of dialysis or even transplant um, therapy in these cases. And so what I encourage parents to do is in cases of severe hydronephrosis, if they're interested in fetal intervention, to really seek out those tertiary centers of excellence, um, which there are a few around the country um, that specifically specialize in fetal surgery. Now, shortly after birth, typically around 48 hours to a week, we do recommend that the child undergo a post-birth ultrasound to sort of reassess the hydronephrosis. We don't encourage immediately after birth within day zero to day two, because the, the baby might be a little dehydrated from birth. So we usually recommend around 48 hours with the exception of really severe bilateral hydronephrosis. Now, based on what this ultrasound shows, it might prompt additional imaging either immediately or within the first few weeks to months of birth. These imaging tests might be a specialized x-ray test called VCUG, which involves putting dye into the bladder to look for reflux or a special renal scan to look for obstruction in the urinary tract. And then depending on how severe this hydronephrosis is based on the initial ultrasound, the physician might start the baby on a low dose once a day prophylactic antibiotic to try to prevent urinary tract infections. Okay, thank you. I'm sure that information is reassuring to, to parents going through this, um, the same condition with their child. Um, so what advice would you give parents who just found out that their child has this condition or are currently experiencing this condition with their child? I think, I think, I think you hit it right on the nail is it's that, you know, I think a lot of parents, once they hear this big word and this term, they get a lot of anxiety and a lot of worry appropriately. So, um, and so I tell parents first to calm down and take a deep breath. Most parents need to understand that the vast majority of hydronephrosis will resolve on its own without any intervention. Like I mentioned before, a lot of times, even before birth. And so, you know, it's important to get those serial ultrasounds because just one ultrasound only gives us a snapshot of that moment and is not enough information to really determine whether the child needs immediate intervention or if intervention can be delayed. If, you know, there are questions or concerns with amniotic fluid level or with severe um, hydronephrosis, we really encourage the mother to seek specialized care with the maternal fetal medicine uh, physician, and also with a pediatric urologist. That way, once the, uh, once the baby is born, then we can set up appropriate postnatal care, get them the ultrasound that they need, and make sure that they get follow through um, within the first several years of life. Great. Thank you so much for sharing that advice. And is there anything else that you'd like to share with our listeners today? Um, yeah, I think, you know, hydronephrosis is really one of the most common conditions diagnosed in the prenatal period. Um, like I mentioned, it's the most common urologic condition diagnosed. The main goal prenatally is for us to find hydronephrosis so that we can help sort of manage the health of the fetus and the baby uh, over a period of several years um, into even adolescence if we need to. 
Um, really, we want to be able to minimize adverse outcomes and also limit inappropriate testing uh, in cases where it's just benign and transient and help target and take care of the patients who really need those, uh, that specialized care. Wonderful. Well, Dr. Tong, thank you again so much for taking time to be on today's episode of the Urology Care Podcast. Thank you so much for having me. This podcast has been brought to you by the Urology Care Foundation, the official foundation of the American Urological Association. For more information on today's topic and for all things urology health, visit urologyhealth.org. That's urologyhealth.org.